Hello, my name's Phil and I run Time Trails in Brittany. What I want to do today is make a short video um, looking at stone tools. Now, very often people show me pieces of stone they may have found on a beach or on a walk in a forest or perhaps even in their garden. And they look at them and think that they don't look like they're a, a natural shape. Now, what I want to do today is show you one or two things to look out for, which will help you to recognize whether it really is a stone tool or not. Where do we start? Um, here's a little piece of flint. The white coloring is because it was found in chalk, so it's absorbed a lot of the color of the chalk. And what do we need to look for? First of all, what we're looking for a shape that suggests it might not be natural. Now this looks like it could be some sort of spear point or perhaps uh, an arrowhead, it's quite large. Um, but how can I tell whether that is man-made? Well the first thing we look at is at the wider end. And you can see we've got a flat surface We've got a flat surface here that we call a striking platform. So this is where somebody would have hit this with another piece of stone or bone um, and forced this piece of stone to flake away from a larger, what we call a core, a larger piece of rock. That's our first telltale sign, this flat platform, striking platform. Beneath that, we get a bit of a bulge. I'm not sure if you can see that bulge. Um, this is called a bulb of percussion. And this is formed naturally. When the stone is hit and it flakes away, it leaves this bulge. So we've got a striking platform and a bulge, or a bulb of percussion. There are other things that we would look for. Let's have a look at this tool. So again, we have the flat top. We have a bulb or a bulge here, not quite as pronounced on this tool. Um, but we've also got, running down the back, some signs here that small flakes have been struck off of this flint. Now what this does, it actually enables that tool to sit very comfortably in those three fingers. Put a thumb on there and we have a scraping tool, which would be ideal for scraping flesh off bone, um, for maybe even stripping bark from pieces of wood. So this one also has some radiating ripples running through it. We call these ripples of percussion. So again it just reinforces the fact that this was struck at the top, the bulb formed when it flaked away, and then the shock waves moving through the stone form some ripples. They're not so easy to see on this tool. However, this one has some very pronounced, and I don't know if you can see these, ripples running through it, almost like waves on the surface of the sea. So again, flat top, for the striking platform, the bulge here, and the ripples. On the back, we can see where flakes have been struck away from this. And then the edge has been worked either side. This, this would have been intended to be some sort of knife, perhaps a double-edged knife, or maybe set within a piece of wood, so it could be used that way. Maybe a bone handle on here. Now this one was actually never finished, because at the narrow end, we can see it widens um, and we have what's called, it's almost like a door hinge. We call this a hinge break. 
where the flint has been pressed too hard and it's snapped as somebody has made it. So you very often find these discarded on Neolithic sites in piles where people have just thrown them away when they were making them. Here's another tool. This one comes from um, very close to Stonehenge, comes from a site called Durrington Walls. And again, we have the flat top with the striking platform. We have the bulge on the back here. We can see pronounced ripples. I don't know if you can see with the shadow working on that stone. Pronounced ripples here. And again, it just sits, two fingers this time, sits in there, would make a lovely scraping tool. So the real giveaways, the flat top, the bulge, the ripples running through the stone, and then signs of other flakes being chipped off, perhaps to make it easier for that tool to be held. Now there's one tool I've got here, and there's, there's no mistaking that this really is a tool. And here's a lovely late Neolithic, perhaps early Bronze Age, arrowhead. And when you find one like that, you've struck gold. Might not be worth very much, but for an archaeologist, that is treasure. So next time you're digging in the garden and you find a stone that looks interesting, you know the things to look out for. Look out for that flat, striking platform. Look out for the bulb of percussion. Look out for ripples running through that stone. And then evidence on the back and round the edges that they've been worked to remove other little flakes, perhaps to make the edges a bit sharper. If you've got all those telltale signs on the whatever it is you've just found, then it's a pretty good chance you've got a genuine prehistoric stone tool that you can add to your collection. If you've enjoyed this and found it useful, then remember to subscribe and to like the video. And if you click the bell, which it, I don't know if it's that side or that side, but um, you'll be notified of when the next video drops. I'm going to be filming out on one of the sites that I visit over the next few days. So there should be another video for you to see in a week or so. Until then, bye bye.